For more on the latest Chinese economic data, let's turn to Dan Wang. She's chief economist at Hang Seng Bank, China based in Shanghai. So how significant is China's long-awaited plan to rescue the country's troubled real estate sector? And I guess the bigger question is, will it make a difference? Will this actually work? Well, we have to think about what this uh, economic stimulus is targeting. Um, because immediately there will be a lower financing cost for potential home buyers. And then for the cash strapped real estate developers, a lot of them will feel some of the relief because uh, more people will get into the commercial housing market and buy more. But overall, um, people have still this very weak ex expectation. If we're talking about housing prices, then we do not believe it has reached the bottom yet because more people seeing this kind of stimulus package will try to sell their homes homes at hand rather than get back and start to buy one because uh, the housing price is still declining and no one will buy a overvalued asset yet. So why do this now? I mean, this has been a troubled sector for some time now. Why now? Um, the immediate trigger is actually the worsened liquidity situation for uh, several major real estate developers, especially the one that have more uh, projects in construction in second tier, third tier cities. And to rescue them, the fiscal revenue is certainly not enough. Local government is really short in cash as well. So we need more home sales. And this is a targeted uh, measure directly to help the liquidity issue. So what are your other takeaways from the latest economic data released by China? Um, are there any uh, bright spots? And what about the challenges still ahead? Uh, the brightest spots continue to be on the supply side. The industrial sector has outperformed many people's expectation, especially for the export sector. Uh, we have seen a great performance for industrial robots, 3D printers, uh, and those sectors have strong demand, not just in domestic economy, but also globally. But when it comes to consumption, it is still growing. Every single month, the consumer market performed better than the previous month. But uh, still, for April, because we had more holidays, the expectation was the performance should have been better. But people are still quite conservative. They tend to save more rather than splurge. Well, so does that reflect consumer confidence? It's not where it needs to be just yet? Uh, exactly. The consumer confidence is largely affected by the housing market performance. Uh, our forecast now is by the end of 2025, the housing market will probably reach a new equilibrium and more people with pent-up demand will get back in there. And that means we'll finally reach uh, this rebound point by then. But before then, probably for most parts in China, since the properties are built in the wrong location, they don't have enough population to support it, then we'll still see continued challenges in sector. So if you're a foreign investor uh, doing a lot of business in China, what will you be looking for? What are your concerns and what do you need to hear um, economically moving forward? Well, the foreign investors, uh, on the one hand, they actually know exactly where the money is flowing to. Uh, the, currently, the uh, policy support is quite obvious that the capital should flow out of the traditional sector, flow out uh, from the commercial housing sector and into the emerging sector, like new material, new energy supply chain, things like that. So uh, that signal is quite strong. And for many of the foreign investors, they also need to see continue, uh, continuous improvement in business environment. So less red tapes, uh, more friendlier attitude towards uh, their attention to set up branches. And also, uh, they really need to see a stronger rebound in business confidence. And that will be reflected in the credit data by commercial banks. And you've got to wonder how foreign investors are uh, taking in the latest tariffs, hefty tariffs, I should say, imposed by the Biden administration on Chinese imports, uh, um, imports on various goods worth $18 billion. Um, how do you think China is going to respond? And do you think it will unravel the diplomatic strides and the thawing of relations that we've seen since President Xi Jinping and President Biden met on the sidelines of APEC last year in California. 
Uh, this is certainly another uh, setback in the bilateral relations because we know that uh, the immediate impact of such sanctions on China's real economy is quite limited since the U.S. is not importing much of those listed goods anyway. But the symbolic significance is quite strong. Uh, right now, the capital outflow from China and industrial allocation to greater Asia away from China is deepening. And with further sanctions from the U.S., more companies being targeted, that just means more companies in China, including foreign and domestic, will take preventive measures. And of course, for Chinese companies, it's not necessarily bad news because they will still secure the overseas market and have more investment in those developed countries directly. But those jobs are not generated in China. We continue to have these job market difficulties.